Good day, I'm Hansi Kolya from BSN 3D and today I will be demonstrating a procedure on how to provide a tracheostomy care. The goal of this procedure is for the patient to exhibit a tracheostomy tube and site free from drainage, secretions, and skin irritation or breakdowns. For the equipment, check for the bedside table or the overbed table. A clean towel to be placed over the client's chest to keep them clean. Tracheostomy suction supplies if needed. This means that if we have assessed that our client has any secretion or thick mucus on their trachea and they are not able to cough it out, we must use a tracheostomy suction. A sterile tracheostomy care kit if available. And be sure to collect supplies listed that are not available in the kit. Then we will be needing two sterile 4x4 inch gauze pads a sterile cotton tip applicator to clean the tracheostomy site sterile tracheostomy dressing that is pre-cut and sewn surgical dressing but if this is not available we can just use a 4x4 inch gauze that has been cut in the middle then two sterile basins a small sterile brush or pipe cleaner but if we will replace the inner cannula, we can just prepare the disposable inner cannula. Roll of twill tape, tracheostomy ties or tracheostomy holder to replace the patients just in case their tracheostomy holder gets wet during the procedure as it may cause irritation. Scissors, pulse oximeter to check the client's oxygen saturation and make sure that they can breathe properly. Stethoscope to assess for any secretions or adventitious lung sounds like ronchi or crackles. Clean gloves, two pairs. But if we will be performing a tracheostomy suctioning or we will be replacing the inner cannula, we must use a sterile glove instead. Mask, goggles, or face shield. Then, a hydrogen peroxide and a plain NSS or sterile water that will also be used in cleaning the inner cannula. For the implementation, bring the necessary equipment to the bedside stand or the overbed table. Then, perform hand hygiene and put on your personal protective equipment if indicated. Then, identify the patient. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Hansi Kalia from the NUSC, and I will be your student nurse for today. May you know your name, ma'am? And your date of birth? Okay, that's great. So, would you like me to close your curtains and your door to the room? Okay, then close the curtains and close the door to the room if possible. Then, determine the need for tracheostomy care. And we can do this by reviewing our patient's chart prior to going into her room to determine the last time and date of when the tracheostomy care was performed. Then, we can assess the client's oxygenation status by using a pulse oximeter. And, we can also evaluate the tracheostomy site for any wetness or any secretions. Now that I have assessed the tracheostomy site and the client's pulse oximeter, explain to the client what you're going to do and the reason for it, even if the patient does not appear to be alert. So ma'am, I have assessed that the dressing in your tracheostomy is already wet. So now I will replace it and clean the site so that we can prevent any infection from happening. Adjust the bed to a comfortable working position, usually at elbow height of the caregiver. Then, lower the side rail closest to you. And if the patient is conscious, place her in a semi-fowler's position. But if the client or the patient is unconscious, place him or her in a side-lying or a lateral position and facing you. 
Then, move the overbed table or the bedside stand close to your work area and raise to waist height. This is to ensure that you have an easy access to your patient as well as to the equipment that you will be using. Check for lung sounds to determine the presence of adventitious breath sounds which may indicate the presence of secretions. So the lung sounds are clear. This means that we are ready to proceed in preparation for the tracheostomy here. Place the towel below the trachea side over the patient's neck and chest. Then put on your face shield, goggles, and mask and suction the tracheostomy if necessary. And if the tracheostomy has just been suctioned, remove the soil side dressing and discard before removal of gloves used to perform the suctioning. Prepare the basin and cleaning solutions. Mix the plain normal saline solution and the hydrogen peroxide in one basin in a ratio of 50-50. And be sure it will fill 0.5 inch of the basin. Then, add another plain normal saline solution in the other basin and be sure that it will fill at least half inch. Then, perform blobbing. Remove the oxygen source if one is present. Stabilize the outer cannula and the face plate of the tracheostomy with your non-dominant hand. Grasp the locking mechanism of the inner cannula with your dominant hand, then press the tops and release the lock. Gently remove the inner cannula. Okay ma'am, can you take a deep breath for me? Then remove. Check the inner cannula and the outer cannula for any secretions or drainage and place it in the first basin with the plain normal saline solution and the hydrogen peroxide and let it submerge there for a few minutes. Then, gently slide the trachea pad or dressing downward by holding both sides of the lower part. Then, simultaneously check for some exudates Drainage, skin breakdown, irritation, pain, and inflammation. Check the dressing and also the site of the tracheostomy. Then we are going to discard this. Discard the used tracheal dressing. Then clean the inner cannula using the prepared plain NSS and hydrogen peroxide and use the brush to scrape off the solidified or sticky mucus. Then, 
then if we have assessed earlier on that there are secretions present on the outer cannula, we can use a gauze to scrape it off. This part. Then rinse this on the basin containing only the plain NSS so that we can remove the hydrogen peroxide. Then discard the gloves. gloves if necessary. Dry the inner cannula using the sterile gauze or pad. Stabilize the face plate. Gently reinsert the inner cannula back to the tracheostomy tube. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to insert this now in your tracheostomy. And be sure it is properly locked. Dip the cotton tape applicator or gauze sponge in a cup or basin with sterile saline. However, if we are going to use our second basin and it is already full of secretions, we can use a third basin. But if it is not available, we can just soak the cotton tape applicator with the plain normal saline solution. Stabilize the tracheostomy tube and use each applicator or sponge only once. And I'm going to begin at the upper part of the tracheotomy, moving from the stoma side outward. Then discard, stabilize again, and moving from the stoma side outward. Discard again. Pat the skin gently with a dry 4x4 gauze sponge and this part. We must ensure that the tracheostomy tie did not get wet when we clean the stoma side. Then, I'm going to slide the commercially prepared tracheostomy dressing or the pre-folded non-cotton filled 4x4 inch dressing under the face plate and tie. Then, check the fit of the tracheostomy collar and you should be able to fit one finger between the neck and the collar. We must make sure that the patient can flex the neck comfortably. Okay ma'am, how are you feeling? 
Okay, that's good. Can you try to flex your neck? Okay, that's great. Then, reapply the oxygen source if necessary. Remove the towel. Then, remove your gloves. to a comfortable position, raise the bed rail and place the bed in the lowest position. Okay ma, how are you feeling? Okay, that's good. Then, remove the additional PPE if used and perform hand hygiene. Proceed to document the procedures that you have done as well as the assessments that you have performed. Reassess the patient's respiratory status including the respiratory rate, effort, oxygen saturation, and lung sounds. I have reassessed my patient. I'm going to proceed in documenting my findings again. Reassessment is important to determine if we have met our goals. This ends my demonstration. Thank you for watching.